didn't realize yesterday was my birthday, uh, there's still time for you to get me a gift. You can post date a check if you need to. That's fine. That's my job. <laughs> yeah. Say at least fine no, for him. Honestly, thank you for that. That was really very considerate, very thoughtful. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I don't know how to say you're welcome. I'm not good at uh, sentimental things. I know. I've, oh, I've given you three wow. chances. Now, everyone, yeah, you're, you're welcome. Gave you three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it, the recording is on, by the way, if you wonder. So we are ready to roll. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I guess, so um, well, just real quick. So there's no more Wintermaster. The Wintermaster concluded on Sunday. So right now, nobody's taking classes anywhere. So it might be a small bunch today, but I mean, that you know, we could delve even deeper into the topic. Yeah, just how I like it. So no problem there. All right, so let's go into it. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm glad to have those who are here. Uh, and I know that everyone who is here actually likes to talk about philosophy. <laughs> Good stuff. So we have two topics today, but Nancy wanted me to keep it simple because, you know, he doesn't like to, he doesn't trust in our capabilities to analyze topics too deeply, you know, we have to keep things simple. Um, that's right. That's Correct. right. Yeah. We're not in that level yet. Yet. Okay. So or, we, we are discussing, hmm? or, or ever you said? Oh, wow. That's, that's nasty there. Like, uh, it, it crossed my heart. <laughs> So, well, actually, touching about the level of like philosophy that we can attain, uh, we, we're going to be talking today about education. So, as, as we were mentioning last week, uh, the 2021 year for us will be different when it comes to education wise, because it does come with probably, that's something to be discussed today, uh, different. Um, what was the word again? Like uh, expectations different expectations because normally we we know how the year will go so we kind of like know how to assess what we want to get from our education but everything being virtual the resources changing like everything is changing so has the purpose of education changed um, and so why uh, why has it changed now for the second topic is perception of identity uh, which the the whole motivation behind it is like for example if you say that you are a kind person, but those who love you the most or those who know you the best tell you, no, you're not, who holds the truth of your identity? Those who are receiving your actions on you who claim to be something. Um, yeah, with that being said, feel free to dig into any of these topics and we'll do the best to kind of like keep the ball rolling. Before we forget, and before I forget, actually, in the chat, if you want to talk, um, I'm going to do a quick example. You have to type exclamation mark. That way we know the order and we don't skip anybody. So you just, if my computer allows me, there you go, like that. And we know who goes first, who goes second, instead of like resting hands, because then we may meet who was first. Okay, there you go. Does one, someone wants to start the conversation? I can start us off, I guess, here. Um, I think there is an interesting idea of like identity and education, especially with like the new conflicts or adversity that we're facing via virtual learning. I think, you know, the, the two the two motivations for people has been, oh, I want to go to school to get a good job to make money. It's sort of a really utilit utilitarian kind of standpoint versus like other people who might say, you know what, I want to get something out of education. I want to enrich my mind. I want to actually learn and uh, obtain values. And I think that um, virtual education kind of tackles that head on. It's like, what are people doing when they're virtually learning? Are you one of the people who are just cheating and like using all the books when you're not shouldn't you shouldn't use a book? Are you Googling stuff? Are you doing your homework? Like, are you or are you maintaining your integrity? You know, are you looking to actually learn the material that you have in front of you, placed in front of you? Or are you the person who's just like, oh, whatever I need to do to get that grade? You know, so I think in this time more than ever, you can really learn not only about yourself, but like how to learn. You know, because I think when I was doing online classes, that's when I felt like I really learned to learn on my own at my own pace. 
And then when I took that over to the actual in class with my professors, I was like, wow, I already have the tools because I was able to do it on my own. But now with the guidance of someone else, I can even emphasize that even more. So it's like this in this time, it's like a very self motivated sort of time. It's like you're going to have to be the person to say, I'm going to learn this on my own, on my own freaking will. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's just in the freaking, that part will be clipped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I do agree with you. Um, but something also that I believe kind of like plays along both in education and identity, since both are the topics, is that it, it also, this, this method of education also kind of like uh, exteriorize um, like how, commit, how committed we are with education and also like how we do that with our own personality because uh, well in my end I, like I don't need anybody to tell me like when to sum in my classes or anything but other ones seems to be depending on it like the fact that to go to and be in the sitting room where the professor is actually like coordinating like every move that you have seems to be for them part of the education and when you remove that it does expose so a part of their personality that maybe they weren't too comfortable with because it's kind of like oh that means that now actually the education comes like just from me. And I believe that uh, maybe, I mean, I, I didn't leave back then, but I believe that partly education before was more personal. Like it is more like depending on someone who tells you like what information is, because before you have to look for the information, you have to look for the professor, like as he has to accept you as a student. Now it's kind of like you have a lot of people. So it does kind of like expose who we really are and even if we really love the major that we're pursuing because you know that also plays into effect how motivated you are to do your things on your own um so yeah but at this point no. i mean yeah no <clears throat> okay you guys can go <laughs> well yeah i just wanted to comment on both of those um yeah i mean both great points for sure uh uh, yeah, Orlando, I think it, you, you kind of are bringing out some of the virtues of online learning uh, because it does sort of, and Fernando, I think you're, you're getting at something that, that was very complimentary uh, to this same point, which is that, again, how, how much can I trust myself with my education? Um, I think that's kind of what it comes down to. And so th this is sort of what I meant when I referred to the expectations aspect of this topic, which is that, again, one expect, and you're getting at this uh, r really well, Fernando. One expects a certain sort of educational experience based upon, you know, tradition, based upon, you know, what uh, they might have experienced in the past, or maybe relatives, friends, whatever the case may be. And that experience has sort of drastically shifted, you know, in the name of safety and protection for sure, but but nonetheless, it's shifted. And so, ought the expectations for an educational experience shift with it? And will that shift sort of, I, I, I want to say necessitate or bring about a, a different way of understanding oneself, identifying oneself as, you know, a good student, especially if now, you know, it requires different, uh, different sets of responsibilities to sort of be a good student in this new climate, in this new context. But yeah, I think y'all making some really good points. I think also, I mean, during this time, it kind of sh will have to cause a shift for certain students to realize what it takes to kind of succeed in these cl courses, because I feel like a lot of students, high school students who come into uh, to college, they have this expectation of, oh, OK, I just need to learn what the professor tells me. It's just going to be that they don't really have some don't have this accountability that it's like, oh, no, I need to put the downtime in my own time. And so with this virtual learning or essentially having to be pushed to that, like how you guys were talking about this self accountability. And so I think that's that's the most important part is obtaining those skills and that actually understanding that it's not about how they're going to teach me. It's about how I can learn it and what's the best way that I can learn. And so, I mean, and that's that's the pros of virtual learning, I guess you could say, but I think it also you do lose something with the, the in class learning because I feel like the professor also you know provides something like a, he kind of provides a challenge for this for the students you know as in like okay how am i going to push you in this course how am i going to do this in person you know like maybe like a timed writing or maybe even problems that you don't see in the book so on and so forth like so certain experiences that you kind of 
were used to and you enjoyed in class that you no longer have, you, you're going to kind of take it. You took them for granted. You might say, you know what, I, I will really appreciate that once I do have that. And so I think that's one thing. That's one way I'm looking at it for sure. Uh, like I'm taking a French course for the first time. I've never taken foreign language for French. And I, I'm really going to take it for granted because I'm not going to have anyone to practice with. I don't really know anyone who speaks French. So I'm going to have to be on the lookout. But that's just one example. I would rather much be in class being able to actually practice it with someone rather than just on my own and having to kind of outsource. Mm -hmm. But OK, but this is the thing. Um, because I believe that part of I mean, then this is just personally. Um, if you really want to learn, for example, French, the, like yes, granted, you have challenges that you wouldn't have if you are in person because you you already have the person there to speak French. But like the virtual setting, does not necessarily mean that you don't have access to those resources. It just means that you have to come with a different set of mentality. The initiative has to come from you. Like for example, um, normally yes, the professor has to think on how to engage you physically. But that doesn't mean that you cannot engage the professor. It's just that it's harder for him to individually reach all the students. But if the student is motivated enough to learn from the class, he will reach the professor. And it, through there, you can maybe ask him, like, hey, listen, I really need something more engaged. I and mean, I may need this type of approach. And if you start talking with the professor and you show that interest, like mm -hmm. that says first something from your personality that you're really wanting to do something. And that will create, uh, that will fill the void that you were missing to begin with. Same, for example, like English. I didn't spoke with anybody English before I came over here to tell you like I was college ready. All I did was like dictionary, like just like a TV and like a, some songs and things like that. And I came over here and like, you're college ready. And like, this is insane. I don't know, I don't understand how. But the, the, the thing <laughs> is like, I was committed to it like every day. So like I was reading it and like I was looking for people to like, how oh, you speak English? I will speak with you, you know, but like that mentality is what I'm thinking. Like I was really motivated and I think like part of being now a virtual education, you really have to assess better if you really want to get that education or not, which is why so many students seem to be struggling so hard because kind of like they the the motivation maybe depend from others so they kind of just follow and now you just with your thoughts and kind of like having to assess was this really what i wanted to do and it, it is also it comes with the adaptability and other stuff but i see other people want to say something so Mancy, you're next you're muted oh, Nancy. you're muted you're muted nancy you're muted <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I'll, I'll pause my point if you all want to keep going. I like the conversation. Uh, That's fine. I mean, I, mean, I can continue. The only thing is that Yusha is next, so I mean, I can continue. The, the Yusha wanted to reply to it, so maybe we can do it that way. <laughs> okay. He's so I, I guess I will speak one more minute <laughs> since you want to just keep me talking. Um, so. I mean, you can. I, I guess. She doesn't want to go by then. Then I'll then I'll change my points. Okay. So yes, because for example, for me, that is maybe one of the um, most promising aspect of virtual learning, which is like students have to assess something that before it was for granted. Just the fact that just coming, you receive motivation from other people, and then like, oh well, they kind of like make it by accident. But by being by yourself, you have different demons in your head that you have to like really think okay now I have to set my own time now I have to get away from distractions do I really want to do this and th this allows uh, students to start like creating or like maybe reassessing how they believe they are because before they maybe just by the act of being at school they could maybe say to the to their, their parents hey I'm getting my education I'm working hard but now you are not going there now you actually have to take care of your things. So are you really working hard for your education? Because for Nando, I feel like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt. I feel like you bring up this point though, and then like it kind of gets to something I think Nancy talked about last time, which is, you know, well then if that's the case, if all this accountability is gonna go to the students and like you're gonna be doing outsourcing all these resources you had in school, then how does that shape the idea of like college tuition? You know, why is it if I'm going to be doing all of these things and all the resources that I once had can essentially be outsourced, then is it fair that the student still has to pay the same amount that they're paying? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And if so, I, and I think it brings up like a, a boatload of questions of like saying, okay, well, then if that's the case, then how should colleges reform essentially to provide more for students that they can't provide for themselves already? Yeah. And I, I don't know if Grace is trying to say something, but yes, that I think it's partly of what the students are saying, why I'm keep paying the same rate if I'm having to do more on my own. But do you want to say something, Grace? Let's let the prof. Oh, I thought we were going to let. Never mind. Never mind. Well, I, I really like um, Orlando's perspective on this because this also brings the question of then what is really the role of education as a whole? Do we really need to go to college or is it more just to get a certificate because we can still learn all these skills by ourselves? Mm. So, yeah, I really like this philosophical type of thinking. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, no, I like those points. Um, again, just as a, as a quick response, I think the question pivots back to the role of the professor. Um, if, if it's all about the students to teach themselves, and this is how the students see it, and you can outsource the, um, I suppose, the content scholarship uh, and find it for yourself. And professors, some some professors, not this one, some professors get paid a lot of money. <laughs> that not this one? So that's, that's, that's where a lot of money goes. Um, I mean, the, the question that becomes, well, the difference is, or rather the reason why, students are still encouraged to go to college and why college is more than just the certificate. And again, we can debate this, but um, it's because you're, you're coming into contact with experts in the field at a time where, I, I mean, if you weren't going to college, you would have no inroads to, to be able to talk to people who are experts in their fields. So that's supposedly the benefit. But if, yeah, I suppose if the role of the professor continues to, to get kind of, I, I guess, diminished, you know, part, partly because of circumstance with the uh, online thing, but but maybe in other ways. Yeah, I mean, students might be really asking themselves, well, if I have minimal interaction with the professor and, and other things, you know, all being equal. You know, what is what's the secret ingredient in education? Mm -hmm. And because I think the idea is the secret ingredient are the professors. And, and not just because they're providing you with the content like a Wikipedia page but they are inspiring in the way that they transmit the knowledge to you, that they teach you how to learn, if that makes sense, as opposed to having to figure it out for yourself. Yeah, it makes sense. And I also think, it, and I think in this case, Jusha can even expand more into it because, for example, um, if the professor is really good at expressing the love that he has for his subject, a student that otherwise would not have loved that subject, like I start to learn it, like, okay, start learning a different view, a different perspective of what really that, um, in this case, philosophy uh, could mean for, for him, you know? Because before it's like, philosophy means nothing. And then the professor, well, have you considered this? And he started like really pointing out things that may spark something inside the students. It's like, you know what? It could change like the way of the trajectory um, educational wise of that student. Which that's why I believe that uh, uh, professors need to have a certain set of skills, because yes. now with the internet, is uh, access to information keeps just like growing and growing and growing. So I do believe that it could start changing how we perceive professors should work. I guess. But the you is next? Thanks. Uh, the the argument is going great, but I will I will bring it to like the physical environment of the classroom because I can say from personal experience that I had to take uh, one of my math classes twice because the first time I had failed and the second time I passed with 100% grade. That being said, the class that I was attending in person, I failed that one and the one I took online, I had passed. Why? Because while taking the class online, I was just copy pasting answers left and right. You know, tests, quizzes, homeworks, assignments, it didn't matter. I wasn't learning anything at that point. I was just passing the class. But the class that I had failed, I still recall most, if not all, of the content that I had studied uh, in that class. But the one that I took online, I barely have any memory of. So it, it also has a lot, of, a lot to do with uh, our, our basic biology that we remember things not just by by memory, but the experiences that are attached to it, because uh, a lot of stuff that is linked to memory 
is uh, correlated to something, some form of action or some form of event that took place in that time. So with, with us being online for at least another year, uh, the speculation is until September 2021. It might not be a good idea to still charge the fee that was being charged when it was in person because on campus we had all of these resources that the students had access to and no one even questioned how much the school charges for them. But since transitioning online, the first biggest asset we as students lose is the professor. Two is the classroom. Third, the library. Fourth, the, the resources, the uh, learning corners, the, the tutoring corners and all that, the laboratories and everything. So can I stop you there? Come again. Can I stop you there? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. OK, so how would you say we lost those resources? Because you've mentioned professors especially. See, in the time since uh, since COVID-19 happened, I have not skipped a single class. I mean, I take class every semester, a full load of classes. And until now, I'm about to graduate. I still have a single class where my daily attendance is required. So either make that mandatory, the school should make that a mandatory or completely take it away. It should not be left to the individual's own discretion if they want to meet every day. Because in a physical classroom environment, it's not up to the professor nor the student if they want to come in or not, because then they, fa they face uh, consequences for that. And that's why the biggest asset we've lost is the professor themselves, because even the class that I'm taking right now, uh, well, the coming semester, the professor uploaded everything and said, oh, these are the resources, external resources. You can go and check them out if you want, but the assignments and homeworks need to be submitted on time. I mean, sure, that's easier on the student because I can just go copy paste and uh, copy paste and that stuff, but it does not justify the, the amount of fee that I'm paying, especially as an international student, even though I've been in the US for three plus years. OK, but um, I do understand where you're coming from. And I also agree to a certain extent because, uh, for example, for me, the past semester has been so far the worst that I had throughout my entire academic journey. However, I also do realize that it's not necessary that you lost the access or the resources of your professor. It's just that now the way that you have to get this access to your professors has really changed. And now it's, it requires more of you to be able to reach out to them and set up a personal meeting with them just so that you can um, have access to them in the first place. Uh, also, whenever you talk about the tuition, I also agree from um, the standpoint that we don't necessarily have, especially if you talk about students who are in science and technological fields, don't necessarily have access to the labs as much as we used to and other uh, tools that can be found on campus. However, if we do that, we will really be able to keep a sustainable educational environment because then you, you have all the faculty that needs to also have their pay. So how would this work if we decrease the tuition for students? I think, that, no, I, I think that's a bigger question. And I think, I mean, when you get into the nitty gritty of that, uh, that's like, uh, that's a number we just don't have. You know, we just don't know how tuition is kind of dispersed in terms of the faculty. We don't know what, what in terms of like what we're actually paying. You know, that's like a man, that would be a very hard question to answer. Um, but I, I kind of just to bring it back, I kind of wanted to say like, I think for a lot of the time when it comes to many subjects, you know, it's kind of like how Manzi was saying, professor is key. I think philosophy is a good example of that because, I mean, I, I remember taking philosophy courses and just being like, oh, I can learn all this stuff on my own. I can go read these books and I'll understand it. You know, I was I was arrogant like that. I was thinking like that. But it wasn't until like I took Manzi's course and I was there with Manzi. And then I was just like, man, I already know all this stuff. But then Manzi was posing questions to me. He was telling me things. He was explaining things that I just didn't understand in the way he put it. 
And so that to me kind of is a, is a good perspective to see like, okay, that's how key the, per, the professors are. I think when you're getting to subjects, maybe like calculus, like basic calculus and things like that, those are pretty self-taught. There are certain subjects that when, once you get into your majors, you get into the actual field that you're wanting to go into, the professor is definitely key. But I think in this time, a challenge that all the students are faced with accountability, the professors are also faced with accountability. How am I, as a professor, I'm not a professor, obviously, but how as a, as a professor am I going to engage my students over an online course? It's like you're going to have to think of new innovative kind of ways to essentially grab students' attention, have them engage with the other students possibly, have them outsource as well. So it's like it's a, it's a whole new frontier of just possible innovation, you know, possible ways to engage students. And not only that, but when you build this kind of rapport with your students, it, it's not only going to transfer from online, but maybe in class. They'll be like, hey, you know what? That professor was really good. Let me get someone else in his, in his course, so on and so forth. So. <laughs> and can you hear me? Yes. I mean, I'm not sure if that's what you wanted to say with your turn, Orlando. If that's so, then Nancy is next. Oh yeah, let's, uh, that's my turn right there. I'll take it. <laughs> no, I think Catherine's next. No, it was Orlando, then you, and then Catherine. Oh, my bad. Okay. Um, what? Well, listen, let, let's hear from Catherine. I, uh, yeah, let's hear from more of the students, and then I'll respond generally, because I have some things I do want to throw out there. But yeah, move on well, to the students. You can speak first. <laughs> well, what I was going to say was basically just like responding to what Yusha said, and like you basically remember more stuff through experiences. And I know like the two teachers that like I learned from the most they all made us do like crazy experiences like and they like throw balls at us with, like when we didn't memorize you know lines. they make us do like pyramid human pre pyramid so it's like uh, it really depends on like the professor and the teacher if like they can really make you remember what they're teaching and i know for like this semester I never really emailed any of my professors because I was so scared. So I think that was like the disconnect that I found from, you know, my high school and like the online learning. I see. But yeah. I, I, I think that goes back again to what we were mentioning that, that this whole virtual setting does change the way that we experience um, our classes. Uh, because yes, granted, we have professors that, oh my God, like I have had so much fun. It's unbelievable. But I, I have, for example, one uh, special mention. I know that Nancy is not a special, it's always special, but it, it, with another professor. Why? Because um, uh, this professor, like, we literally have no way to engage with each other. No. But for me, like, I always, I, I don't know if it is a need, but I'd rather know who is teaching me. So I like I myself just as an initiative. I said like hey, I I would like to know you. So I like I started to, to email him just to see a little bit more of him and see we can meet together so we can discuss about the class because it was easier for me to learn if I discuss it. And from those conversations and that was virtually all, like this professor became extremely important of one of the projects that I that I created, and like the learning process of the class in itself was great. Not just because yes he did his part but I did mine. And I think that that is also something that it could be implemented in the physical aspect. It's just that we have been become used to depend on the professor to create experience for you when you in reality have more to it on your own. That is something also that you can do in the physical aspect. You can go to the professor and say, listen, is it possible that we can create this? Uh, because part of the, of, of the whole experience to just to see, I remember also um, there was one per, one student my first semester in Richland that he the first week he didn't like his professor because he didn't do something very specific and he asked to be moved to a professor who was able to do those kind of things. He saw that experience for himself and then he learned what he wanted to learn. Um, so both aspects were physical and virtual. Um, so yeah, and. I know then now Nancy wanted to say something, but he's really willing to give his turn all the time. So I don't know if you want to now take your turn. I mean, I like 
I'm just considering that story you just mentioned about your friend who requested a different uh, professor who was more, I guess, adept at um, pedagogical approaches that more suited the students. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I like that students have the freedom to do that. But I mean, I, I guess I'll say this, kind of going back also to what Catherine was saying. Uh, I mean, well, okay, you know what? I'll pose it in terms of a question, a really broad question. I mean, what do we take? So we, so the topic is the purpose of education. Well, what do we take educating to mean? And I mean that in the verbal sense. So is it merely the transmission of information? Is that what education is? So when Orlando speaks about teaching yourself, are you just reading the stuff yourself? Are you finding secondary or tertiary sources that just break down the information better? Are you just seeing, you know, how the information connects, we'll just say, and then therefore that's what we think education is. That's what we think learning is. Or is knowledge something more than just merely information and, and how to execute it? Um, is the educational experience something that requires inspiration? Where maybe in the role of professor, if you look at it really closely, it's not that they teach you how to understand the material, but they teach you why you should value it. They, they, they teach you why it's something that you should care about. Because I like the points Greg was making, for sure. I mean, I think they're all really good points. Um, and, and so, kind of for me, well, when the professor secret ingredient or ingredient, well, well what is, how does that ingredient function in, in, in the recipe? And it seems like it's to convey a sense of um, enthusiasm, a sense of excitement, or again, in, in being inspired over the material. And so convey an act as well as word why this stuff is curriculum in the first place, why it's worth why this stuff, even if it's not the field. Online classes Hey, Nancy, we're picking up some background noise. Yeah, I there's know. some background, but I don't know who is the background. Here, let's yeah, just mute everybody. Yeah, you're already muted. No, I think it was coming from Dusha. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should I start from the top? No. Um, let's go ahead. Yeah, no, the point being is this. The point being is this, that... Uh, Again, it seems like it's crucial for the professor to be able to convey a, a sense of wonder or a sense of, um, again, enthusiasm over the very material that the professor is conveying, uh, presenting. But it, again, it's tough to convey that kind of enthusiasm when you're not in the classroom and also when everything is asynchronous, which means that there's never really a time where we require students to all be in the same virtual space at the same time. So that that's sort of collegiality that happens when you're with students for you know when, when you're with fellow students i mean that from your perspective for 16 weeks that kind of gets lost a little bit too so the educational experience is changing at least temporarily so should our expectations of its influence or impact on us also change and, and don't get me wrong, I'm happy to talk about tuition costs and fluctuation, but but there's also this other side of it. It's like, well, what is the product in the first place anymore? Has it changed so deeply that, you know, I have to modify what I want out of it? Yeah, and I would add before Dusha um, uh, has his turn. Um, oh, my God, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. Ah. It is important. Anyways, the point is like, yes, in, in my, I oh, remember it. Yes. Um, this experience may also change our expectation after we're no longer required to be just virtual. Because once we're required to also come back to the physical aspect, we already went through a whole year of having a difference. So it could also um, shift some things here and there. But yeah, go ahead. Um, Orlando, just storm out. I guess he, he has to go, but uh, I, I like the point that you brought up, Professor. With that being said, I mean, uh, I, I keep hearing people saying that the students themselves have to be independent with that and be motivated for themselves enough to learn anything. 
So if that's the case, then why do parents send their kids to a school initially to to cater to the fact that not everyone is that motivated? Sure, if I'm motivated enough, I can learn one thing, two things, but not as many things that I can learn in a school. My second point is that um, in in a self-learning environment, that being homeschooled, that being teaching yourself, or even like this, a virtual environment, um, a student can get the information or the knowledge, but they cannot get the wisdom that is associated with it. That can only be achieved when you are there with the SME, subject matter expert. In, in philosophy class with me, it was you. For business class, it was another professor. And depending on which class I took in person, it was that respective professor that gave me the wisdom to use that knowledge that I had learned in class. And a good example, I think, can come from um, Harry Potter, the Half-Blood Prince. When Harry gets the book of uh, that belonged to the Half-Blood Prince, there was a potion they were supposed to make or something. But he had to, in the book, in the academic book, official book, it said they had to cut this specific ingredient in half and then squeeze the juice out of it. But the student knows the wisdom that the other students passed down to uh, Harry in that book or in that movie, if you watched it, he has to squeeze that uh, ingredient and then take the juice out of it. So that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom, in my opinion, that sure, it says to cut it, but you don't always get the best um, outcome if you follow the, the book or how the curriculum is set. That comes from the professor's own experience. Like um, in my in my business class, I think we were discussing a a, a project that SMU does where they give their graduates some amount of money and they need to start up their business and report a certain amount of revenue. A lot of business schools do that. The one that I went to, they did a $10,000 revenue for the month. Other schools have different uh, things for that. But in an online environment, in a virtual environment like this, you can expect, sure, I have the best communication with my professor. I'm doing everything that I can to learn as much as I can. But in the end, it's that physical presence of the professor and the student that transfers the, the knowledge and the wisdom properly into the students. Okay. Um, Ravi is next. Okay, thank you. Um, professor Manzi asked if the product has changed, and I think it has changed significantly. Um, I have to agree with you, Sha, that there are just some things that cannot be replicated in an online environment, no matter how hard you try, uh, because we do have sets of material that are curated by a professor for you, but it's not the same experience as being in class and having your professor explaining some things to you and stopping your professor midway and saying, hey, I don't understand this, or this is what I thought this was, and having that back and forth, that is just not available online. I mean, you can say, yes, write an email, but that's very different. Um, I remember a, 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 a class, African American history, where we did um, Socratic seminars, so would we'll write down like different points about a you know particular topic within uh, our curriculum and then go back and forth and they got heated sometimes because the subjects were so controversial you were either on one side of the divide or the other side of the divide the, the divide you could not be there was no middle ground so to speak or it was hard to find that middle ground and so being there going back and forth saying this is what i believe and this is why i believe it and having other people uh passionately say no this is what i don't i don't believe this because of you know these reasons it's very difficult to replicate that on an online platform yes you can have discussion boards but those are mainly just so you make the discussion board you know what i mean it's hardly that robust discussion that you would have um, when you are on campus. 
Uh, and I, I suppose like right now, when we are talking about it, like at the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, why are we talking about it? Because no one can do anything about being on campus right now. But I think even after we get over the pandemic, in whichever way, things are going to change. We're not going to go back to what we were before. So how is that change going to happen? What is it going to look like? And I think those are discussions ed educators are having and we are able to kind of say what we feel as students as well. Um, so those two things. And then Yusha again mentioned that there's the knowledge and then there's the wisdom uh, that you get from a professor. Um, one of the things that they say, especially for people who are doing uh, science subjects, is write everything that the professor says. So whether it's in the book or not, write everything that the professor says, because there's some things, there's some, um, uh, there's some areas that your professor knows every student is going to struggle with, or there's some areas that he knows you're probably, or she knows that you're probably not going to get. But again, that's very hard to convey in an online setting. Um, so has the product changed? significantly i think that whole experience in and out of the classroom in a campus setting has changed significantly and i know even as we go back to normal it'll be a new normal what does that new normal look like without uh losing the essence of what it is to be in college and that whole experience okay wonderful said now Catherine is next. Yep. Oh, uh, so I was also gonna go back to what Professor Manzi said about like basically the purpose of education and how well in like the past, like in ancient Greece, you had to take like a you know a comprehensive education to be considered like a good citizen to society because education helps to like benefit society and humanity and helps mankind like reach its greatest potential by creating more productive societies and like more like and that's why they promoted like institutions that like brought education to to all you know and I think like personally for me I prefer face to face you know like because I think as humans we naturally seek out that human connection so it you like and so like I know personally I like pick up little things from like professors or like teachers and that it's like I wouldn't pick up online you know like I don't know I'm just weird like that <laughs> but yeah that's it oh that's great um I do have to say something since I, it is my turn now that I, I do understand, and it is true that, for example, as you mentioned, that there is a reason why we send kids um, to school so they have a professor to teach them. But I think that part is also responded by something that Nancy mentioned, that the, the thing is like those kids, uh, they don't know how to educate themselves, like they don't have that habit, and those professors are going to teach them tools that later they can help them. So the whole uh, idea of motivation that I'm talking is not, obviously applicable for this case, like for example, for a four years old that doesn't even understand what maybe education really is and how it could affect their future. Um, but whenever you're in college, you already have to, the expectation that you have to know what you want to do with your life to some extent. And the virtual setting does force you to be more clear on what your expectations are for later. Um, and you have to have some sort of motivation behind it. Um, but yeah, of course, I would rather have a physical class where I can like get to know different people, different manners. But I will still argue that, yes, indeed, listen to everything that the professor will tell you, but still don't take it as it is true because professors are also humans and not because this is something you need that is correct. It's still, I would encourage everybody to just revise the information <laughs> um, just in case. And they certainly will help you to orientation, but at the end of the day, it, it, everybody processes information differently. Well, uh, and, this professor is not human. <laughs> no, no, we already said that clear. We have to keep you human because then this will be too robotic. Um, but 
in overall, I mean, I have had my experiences with professors. They are, they are good, but sometimes they say something, and it's like, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> you know, so like I, I, I always encourage people to not take everything you hear for granted. Just listen, consider it, do your research, and then do whatever you can with that information. Um, and yes, I just wanted to uh, say those couple of things, and now I will throw the ball back to Nancy. Present company accepted. So anything I say, I mean, yeah, you, you don't have to look it up. It's it's pretty much transparent. You might as well be. But yeah, definitely for those other uh, professors who haven't come, Joey. Okay, um, I, I just wanted to say this. Again, I, I loved Catherine's points, and I loved your points, Fernando. I, I think they're both really compelling. Um, and yeah, so something Catherine said kind of anticipated my next question, which, uh, which is this. Um, and again, I, I, I'm curious to hear the student perspective, the 2021 student perspective on this. What exactly is the, I, I guess, talking about expectations again, what is the um, expected tangible results or, or, or intangible results of education? So, I mean, is, is the top priority employability? Is that, is that what you want more than anything out of education? You want to be in a position to get a good job or get a job in your field or get a well-paying job? Um, or, or maybe is that priority tied with something along the lines of what Catherine was saying? It's like, well, no, I also want to deepen myself as a person and, and you know, expand my horizons for what I'm able to wrap my head around. And maybe that's the bigger priority. And if I don't get a job, well, then I'll get a job doing something else if it's not in my field. So, uh, like, wh what do you take to be, again, the purpose of education? Is it a job? Is it a deeper understanding of the world and oneself? Is it a really deep understanding of your particular niche field? Is, you know, and does the educational experience extend beyond merely the classroom experience? So is it merely academics that you, you have to show for it at the end? Or do you feel like a more holistic education includes things like student life, clubs, student organizations, things that have also kind of changed have morphed in in the in the new sort of normal um which again we can go back to tuition as well but uh but yeah i mean i'm curious um what do y'all what do y'all think i'll leave it at that i could keep rambling but i'll leave it at that that's fine um i guess that that really will be a, a individual question for everyone because I do believe that when it comes to education, it really depends on the individual. Um, as I have mentioned before, I'm not sure if like in this platform, uh, for me, if you completely, like if you put a gun on me, it's like, ah, like what career is like the one that you love the most? Like uh, there is no real um, degree in a university that I would say I will really love to be that. Like for me, the whole academic experience is more about the, the experience in itself. Like the paper for me is, is a bonus. Um, so for me, like the, the, the people I know, uh, even the resources I'm able to, to obtain from the institution and the people I know, like the learning, like the life experiences is what I thought is sick the most. And the degree that I get at the end is a second because at the end of the day, I, the amount of people I know that they have a degree but they don't work on that degree, they work on something else, is astonishing. But the experience in itself for in a college university for me, it does teach you a lot of like uh, practical skills and it does give you some sort of like connection that can help you do what you really want to do later if, if, if there is no degree for it, of course. Um, so at least that's for me. Uh, so the expectation really changed much because as long as I'm able to keep engaged with the community, I will obtain that. Um, so yeah. I think next is Ravi and then it's Jusha. Um, okay, so initially for me, um, I saw education as a means to an end, and that's to get a job when I'm done. <laughs> that I can actually say, okay, so here's my paper, and I've done this coursework, and, you know, this is who I am now. But I think, um, so for those of you who don't know, I am Zimbabwean. 
um, and I came to the US for school and the education system in Zimbabwe and the education system here is very, very different. So here people are forced to do basics <laughs> like general subjects and then you then get into what you really wanted want to do. So my end goal is to become uh, an engineer. So when I was doing classes like government, like art, I was like, what the hell? Like, why? What does this have to do with the price of tea in China? You know what I mean? Like, I had no idea. <laughs> but I think after doing some of these classes, I do definitely have classes that I walked out and I felt like I've fundamentally changed as a human being like nothing about me is the same in the way I look at the world and in the way I view the world. Um, and even in the way I accept different ideas around me, I think there's a saying that goes, it's the mark of an educated mind to entertain an idea and not accept it. I didn't have that capacity before college, you know, uh, I would not entertain it if I didn't find it acceptable. So now, if you had to ask me now, my opinion is very different two years down the line. I think it's you need to when you come out of that college experience, you need to have fundamentally changed as a human being in the way you look at the world and the way you interact with different ideas um, in the way you're able to interact with the environment around you. I think that's the reason why you go to school. Okay, now it's Yusha. And yeah, it was soon to be done. And we do have to do like an announcement. We're going to be doing the announcement for the new way. We're going to be doing topics for the next semester. Well, go ahead first, Yusha. The, um, the, the goal or the expectation for the 2021 uh, education and the Professor Manzi's question. Well, see, you don't you don't need a college degree or anything of that to make better than livable wage. Like me, I'm going to college because I like to educate. I like to study. I like to teach others, right? On the other hand, I have a friend who dropped out of high school and as of right now he makes more than what a lot of college degree holding professionals make. So there's a lot of comparison that can go in between that and it's a very uh, slippery slope to say the least to get into the pros, cons, perks and benefits and uh, additions and all that. But school and getting a degree teaches us the, the very basics, how to set a goal and how to achieve them. Uh, it expands our knowledge in many different fields at the same time. Three, it helps us uh, do a better job in a place where teams are usually required because in high schools and colleges, especially in the US, a lot of teamwork is promoted, a lot of group projects are promoted and, and that kind of stuff. So it only goes to show that they prepare you in retrospect for a job and not for a business because not once in the US education system have I learned um, the taxation, you know, corporation formation. I've not even learned how to vote and I come in as an immigrant. So these are the things that lack. But if I compare it to my education back home, they're teaching the basics of an adult life there. They're, they're not teaching you grade school geometry or algebra in that that was the stuff I took in middle school. And by the time I got to high school, I was already learning how to do taxes. I was learning how to program coding, robotics, aeronautics and all these US university level stuff I learned back home in a high school. So this really goes to show that in some places it's better and in others it might be worse. But again, the necessity of it no, you don't necessarily need it because the field that I'm going into, they don't even have a degree for that yet. That's how flawed and uh, far back the education system is in the United States that an upcoming field like uh, data sciences, big data management, 
um, oh. and that kind of stuff where everyone is going towards more and bigger amounts of data where it's not concrete anymore, where it's not on floppy disks, CDs, USBs and that stuff. It's all in the cloud. But no one is teaching you how to how to do that. Ten years later, when the field is obsolete, when it's dying, when it doesn't have any more opportunities in it, then there might be a degree plan for it. So this is one thing where the colleges really get left behind as opposed to an individual learner. Because even right now, I'm only taking one class this semester because all the other time that I have and I would have put into classes, I'm putting towards these courses, these certifications that I can get to get a better job. And I'm not even done with those courses yet. And I'm, I don't mean to brag or anything, but just to show you the comparison, I already have a contract that is willing to pay me 100K plus benefits mm -hmm. per year. And I, I don't even have my associates yet. So this really shows the, the difference between getting a college degree versus a, a person who is directly diving into the field. The Philosophy Club will be accepting donations in the future. So. Yeah. It's, well, it's mandatory donations for for a specific officers, and <laughs> <laughs> we get to pick one, and he has to do. Look, I'll just I just want to say something quickly in response. Um, but so before uh, we we go into the the topics for next week, I mentioned something that um. Um, uh, because, for example, like you, you're mentioning, and I think that this notion is accepted well enough, um, that it's like um, you don't necessarily need a degree to make a living for yourself that could be at the very least like, sustainable. So that, that this is still back to the point that, that we were proposing. So if that's the case, why, why are we here? Like, like, for example, if you're already able to get more than 100K and possibly like keep growing those 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 numbers. Why are you still considering like making effort into like education in the university instead of just focusing on the job and just trying to grow that way? Why is it? I mean, okay. and, mm -hmm. a quick response to that and why I'm still here and why I'm eventually going into my master's and hopefully a PhD is because uh, one title sells. One of my high school professor, professors told me the more alphabets you have after your name, the bigger your pay grade is. So AS Associates of Science, comma, BA Business and Administration, comma, MA Master's in Business Administration, comma, PhD. So the many, the the more the merrier in that case. So that's what I hold true because that's you, what you I heard that from a high school teacher who has nothing next to his name. Yes, <laughs> he was a doctor. Uh, he was a doctor, and unlike the U.S. high schools, in in Middle <laughs> East high school teachers are are more expensive in a sense than uh, professors at a college or university because it's their job to teach the fundamentals and blah 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 that's a different story but that being said why I'm still in high school uh, why I'm still in college and pursuing a degree is one it gives me a sense of accomplishment two it, it gives me a hard concrete proof that I know the theoreticals as well as the practicals and three as I mentioned earlier it's going to teach me the ethics of performing in a team of leading a team of being a part of a team and the workplace ethics that I can learn now at zero expense versus me being at the position already and then making those mistakes. Yeah, I mean, but arguably you could do all those things also without like going to college. And again, I, I'm not questioning, I'm not questioning the, your reason. I'm just posing the question for everyone just to make clear. It's not like, like an individual question to you because like aren't those who get the most money with they don't have any of those C level sector to rate the master. They they just develop their own company and the city. So if it is for money, you don't need to spend that much money on education. Arguably the money you are spending on the university, you could spend it on developing your business that could make you more money on your own. Um but I know Grace wants to say something Nancy too and we also have to start like going to the next topic for next week. Um, so, yeah. um. I mean, you pretty much resumed or summarized what I said. 
because this is also in the same uh, sense of, I mean, I do agree with you, Yusha, on the sense that for the education, the experience, and just being able to develop certain skills such as teamwork, uh, being able to communicate effectively with other people, understanding the mentalities and different, uh, I guess, backgrounds and also personalities that can come into your professional and personal life. Uh, college is a great experience. However, whenever you said uh, having more letters after your name can bring you, in a sense, more like having more titles can be a certain security for money. I also want to join Rinando on the aspect that I feel like what can really um, help you be I don't really I don't want to say like successful because money is not necessarily success, but at least fruitful um, from a productive from a productive and monetary sense is the function that you have and just what you do with the title that you have because just trying to accumulate titles won't necessarily bring you the money. That's why you have the Steve Jobs that are that have been as successful as they've been while not necessarily needing to finish college. So it's like it's really the knowledge that you get what are you doing with it and not necessarily the title and even if you have the title generally uh people that have been very successful is because the title was required of them to be in a specific field so if you said that in that sense i do agree with you but if it's just like uh to get a title for a specific position and because this is going to uh, bring recognition i do not believe that this is the best way to approach the whole monetary um, philosophy. No, I completely agree with that. That money is not any in any way, shape, or form a, a status of success or whatever uh, it might represent. But as far as titles go, see these. Often, I've been in so many debates that people bring up these three characters: Jeff Bezos, uh, the guy who owns Microsoft, what is his name, Bill Gates, and Steve Jobs. But again, these guys were dropouts of Ivy League colleges, not not Richland College, not Dallas College. So, which means they already had the intellect, they already had the the upbringing of what they did now. Second, they did go after titles. Why? Because when they started their own companies, their title would have been president, CFO, CEO. And at the end of their name on their business card, it says Apple Inc, comma C dot E dot O dot. And that is what sells. That is my that that was my point. That yeah, I agree to the point that if you actually need the title okay. to be able Everything okay for Ninando? I'm okay, so you and me. It's my mom <laughs> telling it to the dog. <laughs> yeah, I agree in the sense that if it's like basically a requirement for you to get the title, yes. But my thing is like the initial push does not necessarily come from the title. It's like more so the passion and the use of the knowledge that you get. Yeah, because there are some dropouts that they don't come from Ivy League that they also become very successful. Um, at any point, Nancy, you're next, and you're, you should be ne last also. Okay, Um. yeah, before me, do we want to look at Ravi's comment? I think it's a good comment. Okay, so her comment is, are we arguing that you can create your own college experience? I become educated, whatever educated means to you. Can you create that without attending college? Yeah, it's a very good comment. Gonna drop yeah. like, yeah. I mean, I, I'll comment on that comment. Um, also, I really appreciated the points uh, that were just raised. Um, yeah, I really like that back and forth. I, I think you both are making accurate points, and and it's they're like two sides of the same coin, frankly. Because um, I, I don't think money is a terrible standard by which to judge the quote unquote success of an education. But I also, you know, titles are a great standard too, but they're just demarcation. Um, and so again, I, I do also feel as though it's it's what one does with with the knowledge, with the experience, whatever one has, that counts. Um, and that kind of leads into Ravi's question. It's like, well, can we even have that experience anymore, given this, the current circumstances? And if we conclude not really or yes, but not to the same extent, well, then that takes us back to the tuition question. Um, at any rate, 
Yeah, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, while there, there are some classes that seem less uh, relevant than others, according to certain metrics, uh, so, uh, you know, you can look at philosophy, for example. Um, how does philosophy help you, you know, learn the, the tools of the trade for whatever your field is? I mean, that's a real question, uh, the relevance of it from that perspective. But, but you know, I, I kind of consider it like this. Okay, if you want to look at it from that perspective, then education is the means to a further means. And the further means is, um, I guess we can just say, security for the sake of living. So, you know, if you get your degree, that's a means to an end and the end is living. Well, education is the means to the means to the end. But it does seem like, well, if the end is living, wouldn't there be certain classes, certain ways, certain, certain perspectives that you can entertain as a student that will help you live better? That the living itself will, will, will have a deeper satisfaction to it, that you'll have a, a, a greater appreciation a greater happiness for for winning, quote unquote. Um, I think that's where certain classes that might seem less relevant than others, I think that's where they come into play. They help one understand what life is and the quality of it. And they help one make informed decisions, not just in terms of a career path, but in terms of, well, how do I enjoy the spoils of my of my labor? Um, it's, it, it's an enriched experience. It's being happy on a deeper loftier level so yeah i wanted to throw that out there um i think that's why you have a general curriculum that's why no matter what you want to study or, or specialize in you still have to take these basic classes because they especially with the humanities and the social sciences they teach you something about life itself that you can apply to your own and if you don't necessarily get those opportunities or maybe you know they're, they're strictly at a distance then yeah, even at your happiest, you're not as happy as you could have been. I see. Um, I see that you say it's raising another point to, to, to talk. Yeah, but let's try to, I mean, we're already over the time, so can you make it like quick so we can like, because we were supposed sure. also to introduce the new way that we're going to be giving themes and topics for us to speak to. Yes. Um... Uh, two quick things. One, unless you're starting a new business and it is an idea that for sure you think people are going to buy, then drop out of college. And if you don't think that you're going to start a business, stay in college because right now uh, the uh, resumes that you submit are selected by bots. It's not, it's not done like people are not reading it. They're not taking the time. I know it's taught in school that people actually read it, but no one reads them. Uh, they're done automated because I myself have written programs for uh, big companies that uh, recruitment and, and placement of people. So it's all done by bots and they all look at what you studied and the credentials that you have. Second, if you are starting business, keep in mind that <clears throat> the within the first two years, 20% uh, uh, of businesses don't survive. In the following third, third to five years, 45% of those new businesses fail. And only 25% of the new business, businesses that start in a specific year make more than 15 years. And even then, there's no guarantee that they were successful. OK. Uh, give me one sec. Um, in response to that, um, I'd like to say, what's the, why are so many people considering dropping out of college? Because, you know, whenever uh, someone says, like, if you want to have your own business or you want to do something that doesn't require a degree, then you can just drop out of college. Why not, like, combine both college and the business that you want to have? Because at the end of the day, we're like, as humans, we're not just supposed to, um, you know, be focused on only one thing. We are ambivalent, so we can also kind of multiply and be able to uh, fluctuate all of the abilities and qualities that we have. So why not try to, like, attack on two fronts instead of, you know, because it is, it is worse to focus on something, but you can focus on something and still have something alternative on the side. Yeah, that is true. 
Okay. So yes, uh, I think this, we should start because I know, I know, I know us. And we have been <laughs> over the time for like an hour even. So I don't want us to, to go to that length today. Um, so wonderful conversation. Um, but yes, uh, we do have to introduce a change because normally we will introduce a vote to see what topics we're going to be talking about. But now that changes for this spring semester. Um, we are going to have already a set um, topics uh, for the most part uh, where we're only going to be voting potentially once. But even those uh, election methods will not be during the meeting. It will be through a form that we're going to be sharing with you through your emails. So it is more important now than before to make sure that the emails that we're sending out are going to those emails that you revise. So please, if well, if you already receive very well our meetings or, or emails, then there is no problem. But if you rather have those emails to a specific email, please let me know or introduce that in the chat so I can add that to the email list so I can make sure that those forms goes to you so you can have a vote or a voice to where those topics are going to be. And we may also be introducing other areas and other services that we're still discussing. Uh, those sorts of communications are even more important now than before. Um, I don't know if Mansi seems to want to say something else. If, if yes. Oh, no, I was, um, I'm supporting everything you're saying. I, I'm just excited about it. Yeah, I mean, long story short, as, as Fernando was saying, we have a schedule for the fall semester where all the topics have been picked uh, already with the exception of the last topic of every month. And we're going to vote on them like we always, the voting process will be different, it'll be online. But um, yeah, we also have dates already uh, pre-selected for the film series as well as the conference. And um, there's uh, something else that we'll be introducing. I don't know if you want to speak on it. The Phil Officer hours. Oh, so yeah, we're gonna, yes, of course. I didn't want it to because I'm not sure if you already agree. But yes, uh, for those who are taking classes um, or want to explore different philosophy aspects of anything curiosity that you may have, we are going to be opening some uh, philosophers' uh, hours where you can. Um, you can have a more individual talk with the officers from the philosophies to understand those topics or those uh, conversations that you may want to like further your knowledge with. Um, the hours are not set yet, so but we're going to be sending out those to you. Uh, we do intend to potentially have it at, right after the meetings. So if it is up, if that works for you, that's fine. If not, then we're gonna have a different hour. Uh, it will be like a mentoring, but without mentoring, <laughs> without the money. It will be just for fun. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all very, well. I like I like to hang the idea of hanging out after the club session ends, and if people because people's minds are working philosophically, like especially that as, as you made the point last night. Um, so. Uh, so yeah, I like that idea. Um, it's also worth mentioning too that, again, we, we picked the topics in advance, but the, the, the topics are, they're specific to like themes. So one month might be dealing with a particular theme and we're looking at different nuances of that. But the themes themselves are very broad and they kind of tie back to the course material being offered in the philosophy classes this semester. So there is like a, uh, you, you know, uh, a very specific sort of trajectory that the topics are taking. Uh, but uh, but then uh, again, of course, you still have your uh, your opportunity to vote on the final topic every semester. And we haven't picked the, the movies out yet either. If you have film suggestions, I recommend you go to Canopy, uh, which you can do for free. And if there are any movies that uh, pop up that are of interest and pertain to the theme of that particular month, uh, feel free to suggest it. Um, yeah. The other update that we need to do is that we are in 3 to 4 instead of 3.30 to 4.30. Yes. Yeah, that's very yeah, important. Yeah. Um, Changing. So yeah, we're going to be meeting 30 minutes earlier next starting next week. So save the, save the date. <laughs> it's the same date, honestly. But um, it will be 30 minutes earlier. So instead of meeting at 3.30, it will be 3. I will be ending at four. 
that would never really end on time, but at four uh, officially. So yes, we have plenty of exciting uh, projects going on. So be on the lookout. We are going to continue meeting so we can create different programs also for you so you can be more active with us and explore more the philosophy. But in the meantime, just stay frosty, do your thing. And and I'm going to use uh, Mansi's tag, the punchline. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> or it was something like that. I don't know. I got to bring that back. I, I don't say that anymore. I got to bring it back. That was my tagline. Think, think, think about it. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Besides that, uh, possibly on Thursday, I will be able to to upload all these videos on on YouTube, and we're also bringing back the uh, our our website, so we're gonna be updating that website, and a lot of our content will will require you to go there. Which you who knows you may see your photo out there. Who knows? So uh, some quotes here and there. <laughs> Yes, you should. Uh, testimonies. Uh, yes, and testimonies. Yes, but I'm 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 keeping that low profile, like low key, because we don't necessarily know yet who are gonna be selected. But it is a chance. Like, if, for example, there is a specific topic that you really nail it, we're gonna require some time from you so we can talk about it um, with you. So then we can highlight you as uh, a student highlight of the topic of the week or something. So. Yeah, plenty of things going on, and hopefully, well, that keeps the ball running for the philosophy club, who continues strong um, for a whole year. Yeah, that's right. All right, and, uh, and again, um, thank you all for coming. I know it's like a a weird time; it's in between the winter semester and the spring semester. But it was cool to have this conversation. It was a great conversation. Um, huge shout out to the officers, of course, for, for continuing to do a great job steering the ship. Um, and yeah, once again, thank you for the birthday uh, post on Instagram. That was really special to me. I'll, I'll always remember that for real. Um, it's the only time anybody said anything nice about me. Uh, <laughs> also, um, yeah, just get ready for a fun semester. <laughs> All right, I guess that'll do it. Uh, again, we'll be emailing y'all with, with updates before the next uh, meeting on Tuesday. Yes. Um, yes, which is, again, the first day of class. First day of class is Tuesday. On the last semester. I was going to ask, I'm sorry, <laughs> do I put my email here in the chat so that I can get those? Please, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. If you want, you can send it via personal message to one of the officers. That way it's not on the general board and it's just limited to that officers. Officers are Ferdinando, me and Orlando or the Professor Manzi. He's the advisor of our group. OK, thank you. No problem. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah, Ravi, it was my birthday yesterday, 111. Yeah. Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you. Okay. I turned 24. 40. <laughs> Lying. He's lying. He's lying. I know that they. Happy twenty first birthday, Professor. Fifty <laughs> seven. <laughs> you know what would have been better if you would have gotten your book yesterday. I know. Yeah, that would have been cool. All right. Well, um, hey. So, do y'all want to have a meeting again? Uh, the officers, that is. Do you want to meet uh, over the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll send us something in the WhatsApp, maybe a uh, Friday or Saturday, or if we have to Sunday. Uh, okay. I'm, free, I'm free both. Uh, guys, this is just a general uh, discussion we're having. If you guys want to leave, please do feel free. So we don't, uh, we usually just stick back and plan for the next uh, upcoming stuff. So if you guys leave, that's fine. If not, then we're going to leave and start another I, I, meeting. I never remember how it is, but like you don't have to leave, but you can't stay. How was it? Is it like that? <laughs> no, you, it's all right. Like, you don't have to go home, but you cannot stay here. Yeah, there you go. Gabe used to say that to us for a map. Oh. Yeah, that's true. All right. All right. Well, yeah, I just wanted to make sure y'all were down to meet one more time. Um, I mean, kind of check in on any updates that we've done. Uh, again, I, I put all of y'all sort of 
tasks up on the uh, files for the field officers. So, you know, you have that as a reference. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully uh, we can have things like at least a little bit of the website updated by then with the right to officer photos. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to find a way to advertise the schedule. I guess we could just post the schedule online, like on Instagram and stuff like that for the topics. But we'll probably have a lot more people on Tuesday, or if not next Tuesday, because it's the first day of class, maybe the Tuesday after. Um, and then so we'll be kind of advertising what we're doing, I guess, consistently every every week for like the first month. I think as we go further into the semester, we might have a uh, better show of people because not many students will come up, of course, to the first or the second meeting. So it might take them a while. Or at least yeah. for the professors to emphasize them being here in the meetings. Yeah, I think that's fair. But so, um, yeah. Well, okay, but but nonetheless, uh, we'll, we'll carry on as scheduled. So we got the first topic for next week already up there. Um, I think it'll be a good one. Uh, divine metaphysics, looking forward to it. And yeah, just, uh, I mean, look, if you're bored, you got nothing else to do. You got 10 minutes to kill. Hop on Canopy. Just like you, you could search words like reality or, yeah, metaphysics yeah, yeah. and see movies that come up and see if anything looks good. Anything but your choices, would do. <laughs> <laughs> True. For the officer meeting, I am free Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, okay, then. I'm, uh, I'm anything before that, I'll need to check my time. You guys. No, I, okay. I, my time will look better. I, I keep saying this, but it's never true yet. But my time will look better after one thing, so it's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, and I do like the idea, the more I thought about it, of changing it from three to four, because I think, especially as we proceed in the semester, I think businesses are going to start opening again, and then students are going to have, like, shifts to begin at five. So if we end at four rather than 4.30, I think that'll encourage people to stay for the entire meeting. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. I wanted to bring that up. But, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll send you all something in the WhatsApp. Uh, you know, for an appointment for the next meeting. Great meeting today. Y'all had great things to say. Um, yeah, Orlando got the post up there. Very cool. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to what, what comes next. And, and I, I, again, you know, I like to joke about it, but I do really appreciate um, the birthday wishes. That was really, I've never had students do that for me before, ever. So that was really cool. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you I might have been, been a little emotional. <laughs> <laughs> he's hot he's sort of re like recognizing it it's fine um yeah i was about to do a little bit more but it's like he seems to be like in the love profile some people don't like to like receive much in their come in their birds so like i'm just gonna keep it like that uh, but it's glad no, it's... that you like that i did i really did all right well um yeah i gotta i gotta set up nine classes on e-campus okay yeah, don't don't cry, don't cry, man. It's okay. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> no, lot. Uh, all right, but well, yeah, glad to to have this meeting. It was a very interesting conversation as always, and then looking forward to meet with you on weekend and to continue having more fun. Uh, did did. Catherine, send the the email. It's good for me. To, oh, thank you. So he yes. send it to you. Okay. So I can add it to to the email list. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys oh. so much. It's next week. No, actually. Yeah. yeah next week. Yeah, later this week. Yeah. All right. Uh, bye, y'all. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Good one.